Hi, since we were done creating the disk assembly in the previous lesson, let's get on with the caliper. This lesson is part of the SOLIDWORKS crash course on Udemy where we are modeling the mono race car part by part. So if you haven't seen the previous lessons, I would recommend you to do that. Now you can download this lesson guide which has a lot more details about the lesson with the links in the description. Also all the source files can be downloaded from our Udemy or Patreon page. Alright, to start with let's open the SOLIDWORKS assembly file which we created in lesson 4. Before we start with the caliper, let's provide the chamfer on the hub. To do that, open the disk assembly and enter into part editing mode. Select the edge on which you want to produce the chamfer. Now in this case, we are going to provide an asymmetric chamfer, which means that the chamfer will extend on one side more than the other. To do that, simply select the distance distance chamfer type from the top and select the asymmetric type chamfer from the chamfer parameter. Now enter the distance which defines the material to be taken from that side. You can enter the value either in the feature manager or in the feature callouts in the graphics area where you can also visualize which side is which. Let's enter 5mm on the inside and 2mm on the outside. Now you can see that the chamfer is extending on one side more than the other which is the need in some cases. So exit the part editing mode and come to the assembly environment. Let's get to the caliper now. To model the caliper, we are going to model one side of the caliper base and then mirror and merge with the other half. Then we will go on to create the other details. Note that if both the halves are not entirely in mirror image, you can still use the mirror tool in between, till the point it is. This can still save a lot of time. To start with, since we already know the disk diameter, let's open a new part separately and draw the overall caliper outline. It does help to model a complex sketch like this away from all the distractions. With a simple extrusion made, we will come back to the assembly and check if the part fits alright. After that, we will switch back to the part. Alright, so our motto is to model the proportionately right replica of this caliper since we do not have the accurate dimension for each and every feature here. But that will suffice since we are just modeling to get the hang of each and every command in SOLIDWORKS. In practice, it would usually take months to design a production part like this. As you can see, there are many faces here, so it will be slightly lengthy process to generate a similar geometry. So let's begin with a new part. Let's open a sketch on the front plane and start by drawing a rough outline like the model edges. We'll only model one half and mirror it to get the other. Since we do not have the accurate dimensions, we will use the available ones and the pictures to make an educated guess. So let's make a circle with this diameter for reference. Make it a construction geometry. Now construction geometries are entities which have the sole purpose of helping in modeling. So the software neglects them while looking for entities to create the features. Let's create a center line which is again a construction geometry which we use to mirror the profile. Let's draw a most look like shape here using the lines by referencing the pictures. Once we are done replicating the shape, let's mirror the geometry with respect to the center line we just made. Now that we are done with the profile, let's hit the extrusion tool. To center the part with respect to the front plane, let's use the direction as mid plane. Let's dig into the extrusion command a bit further. Now you might have noticed that the top and the side surfaces in the actual part are a bit tapered. So let's taper the extrusion using the draft option and set it to 2 degrees. The problem with using the draft is that it tapers all the surfaces generated by the extrusion tool, which might not be required in all cases. In this case, the bottom surface is probably straight in the physical part, but for the sake of simplicity, let's keep it that way. Now let's see how can we tackle the situation in which we need to taper an individual surface. 
Now you might notice that the front and back surfaces in the actual part is also tapered. So to replicate that, let's use the move face command. You can invoke this command from the search bar or from the insert menu. Or you could also add it to the command manager as we discussed in lesson 1. Now let's select the surface and hit the tool. By using this tool, you can rotate or translate a surface if needed. Click the rotate face option and define the edge about which to rotate. Now set the angle to 8 degrees and check the flip direction if necessary. Now let's do the same for the other side. Ok, to just verify that the caliper will incorporate the disc, both width and height wise, let's insert it into the disc assembly we created in previous chapters. But first, since the disc diameter was changed to 295mm, let's change the caliper outline sketch. Now, there is no need to get scared, you won't have to remake the sketch. To scale it up, we will use the scale tool. Now just like Microsoft Word, once you make a geometry, you can edit it in any way you want. Now we can randomly scale it and see if it fits or we can find the proportion by which we change the disc diameter and apply the same here. To find that proportion, simply divide the change in value by the initial value and multiply by 100. So 90 by 205 multiplied by 100 comes out to be 44%. So the multiplication factor in scaling is 1.44. Now to scale, simply select the entities and hit the scale tool. At this point, remove any entity that should not be scaled and select the point about which the scaling must happen, which is the origin in this case. Now enter the scaling factor and hit the green tick. Now next, put the part in the disk assembly we just made in previous chapters. Now if you do not have the source files, you can get it from our Udemy or Patreon page. Now in the assembly environment, first off, we must position as it should be practically. To do that, let's use the disk reference we drew to make the caliber profile. Let's make it both concentric and coincident with the disk symmetry plane. Just use the all drag or control select method here. Now if the sketch is not visible, you might have to make it so by locating the sketch and selecting the option. Note that the sketch gets consumed into the feature which is created from it. It's a good thing since the space looks less cluttered and the sketch is not going to be used again anyway in usual cases. Also, if you look in the monocar, you can see that the caliper is located at the front in the rear disc and at the back on the front disc. So let's use the angle mate to achieve this. Select the two planes and add an angle mate with an angle of 110 degrees. Flip the direction if you have to. Now at this point, you can see how the caliper will look like with respect to the disc. So let's go back to the caliper part. But first, let me refine the caliper sketch further to suit the actual part. Now we can go on trimming the sketch forever to match it exactly with the caliper pictures. But that is not our motto here, so we'll satisfy ourselves if it looks similar. Now let's focus on the feature C which is the mount for the guide pins. Note that you can use gestures to simplify and speed up the process. You can also customize it as we discussed in lesson 1. Let's create a center construction line which will be used to place the triangular geometry. Note that you can simply snap and create a relation to the model edges. You don't have to convert an entity and create a new line to locate a new entity. Now let's make the two lines and mirror them with respect to the center line. Now we could finish the sketch using straight lines and fillet it using features to produce the curve at the top. But let's learn something new here. Now you have three options when it comes to arc in SOLIDWORKS. Now first is the center point arc, where the first point defines the center, the second point its radius and the third point defines the length. Nothing must do it. Based upon the data available to start with, we will use each of these arcs. The second one is a tangent arc. To use this, you will have to select the end point of a line segment. Once you click on it, you can move your pointer in any direction, which will define the direction in which the arc will move. The third one is a three point arc. The first two points define its end points and the third one its radius. Alright, so in this case, since we know the end points, we will use three point arc. Click on the endpoints and then click again to define the radius. At any point, if something doesn't feel right, you can just hit escape and exit the command and hit enter again to relaunch the tool. Alright, let's hit the extrude tool now. Use the mid plane extrusion with a depth of 103 and a draft of 2 degrees and hit the green tick. Right, so now we'll create the hole for inserting the pin as in the actual part. 
To do that, simply start a sketch on the plane and draw a circle with a diameter of 3mm. Then cut it with a through wall both and condition. Ok, so compromising is really not my strength, so let's go back and refine this feature. Now let's create the feature B, which is a cut probably to save weight. To do that, open a sketch on the front plane and use a 3 point corner rectangle. Now the benefit of using this type of rectangle is that we can orient it as we like, which is not the case with a simple corner rectangle. Now it's obvious that we use a center rectangle when we know the center position and a corner rectangle when we know the corner positions. Now let's position it so it resembles the actual cut. Note that you can drag the entity or the whole rectangle either from the graphics area or by using the move tool where it is more precise. Manipulate the rectangle so it resembles the actual cut. Now as you can see, I have replaced the rectangle sketch with a quadrilateral to best suit the profile and also change the plane to better predict how the cut will look like. Now let's produce the cut by using the extrude cut tool. Since it's a tapering cut, let's use the drop option with a 7 degree draft. Hit the green tick and there you go. You can see that so far this geometry resembles the actual part. Now we can mirror the cut feature that we have just made at this point. But let's hold on until we create all features which are to be mirrored to save time. Now to create the rib feature which we have named G, let's open a sketch on the front plane again and draw a quadrilateral. FYI, any figure with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Now reshape the entities so it reflects the part and extrude it 60 mm. Now let's use the move face tool to tilt the front face of the feature we just created. Choose a plane to tilt and then axis about which it should tilt. Then enter the value which is 15 in this case. Use the flip option if required. Now let's mirror the features just created. Select the feature either from the graphics area or from the flyout feature tree. Now it may look like a little convenient to select a feature from the graphics area, but beware about the feature which gets selected when you select a face. Remember that the feature which created the face will be selected, but in this case it's not so obvious. Note that we wanted to select the feature named G, but what got selected was a feature named Move Face. This because the face was moved and in a sense created using the move face tool. So it didn't get mirrored. Now the move face feature mostly cannot be mirrored as you can see here. So let's go back and correct the mistake. Note as you can see here that every feature is present 4 times. So to save time, we are going to use the mirror tool twice. First to mirror at the back and then all the features on the side. But to do that, let's roll back and create the mirror tool above mirror 1. Now this is equivalent to creating something by traveling back in the time. We have already seen in the past chapters that creating features like this can save a lot of time. Now select the desired features in the mirror tool and then tilt other faces by using the move face tool.
right so let's take a short break here since it's been a lot and we're going to finish modeling the caliper in the other half of this lesson so don't forget to join us on facebook and youtube and partner with us on patreon to share our work and revenue have a good one